Hey everyone, Joe Previtt here from the Facebook open source team. Today, we're gonna to be talking to you about going from engineering into developer advocacy. So today, I'm gonna to share my story. My teammate, Dimitri, is going to share his story as well so that you can hear from a few different perspectives on how people go from engineering into a DA role uh, working for a company such as Facebook. Hello everyone, my name is Dmitry Vinnik and I'm an open source developer advocate at Facebook. Today we will discuss uh, my journey uh, from engineers to developer advocacy. My journey began as an engineer. So while I was progressing my engineering career, I've realized one important thing is that communication is the key. While being a technical person is important, more crucial than anything is to be able to talk to each other, write a small summary of your project, be able to present it to people, or write a small, short email to your colleagues or other teammates. It all comes down to how effective are you in your communication. And to get better with anything, you should practice. Practice is the only way. If you want to be a better writer, you should write. If you want to be a better speaker, you should speak. So myself, to gain more experience and you know improve uh, myself in the communication, I started writing short manuals, wikis for my colleagues for projects I've been working on. But then one day I uh, was able to attend a conference, ApacheCon, and I was just amazed by the knowledge-seeking audience, the community that I met in the hallways, in the lecture rooms, and I was hooked. So I decided to start speaking. And after I applied for an event and got accepted to speak at a conference, I've been doing it ever since. As I was doing more and more conferences, I now found myself that I'm unable to stop. I was just uh, involved so much in the community and working with them, you know, improving myself, but also you know, learning more and more from others. And ultimately, I decided to become a full-time developer advocate. So if you're a developer who is interested in interacting with the community, in producing some content, learning from others, as much as you can potentially teach others about your unique perspective. Give it a go. Apply to speak at a conference. Write a blog post for yourself or someone, el someone else. Uh, produce any type of online content that might fit your personality. Fortunately, there are enough resources online on how to write your first proposal for an event. There will even mentorships available for first-time speakers at lots of conferences that are available online. We all experience this fear of applying for a first event or writing that blog post we always wanted to write um, for the outside world. This is what people call imposter syndrome. And that's totally normal. Uh, it's, it doesn't matter what level person is or uh, we all feel like that our perspective, our experience might not be valued. It will be. There will be readers. There will be people who are excited about learning from your unique experience. Everyone has a story to tell. And there will be listeners. There will be readers. So give it a try. Uh, feel free to ask us, developer advocates at Facebook, any questions in your journey to become developer advocate. And we hope that we can help you with that. Yeah, so thinking about going from engineering into developer advocacy. It's interesting because sometimes it can feel like a chicken and an egg where to go into a DA role or becoming a developer evangelist, you'll see one of the job requirements is previous experience working as a developer advocate or in some similar capacity. So it can be tough and that's kind of the issue that I ran into before this role. I was working as a software engineer, applying to different roles, trying to get into the DevRel field and really the things that I kind of learned that helped me when I was applying for these roles was having experience writing blog posts, creating content, making YouTube videos, making videos where I'm teaching other people how to program, creating tutorials, learning materials, running workshops, speaking at meetups, speaking at conferences, things like that. So essentially the things that you might do as a developer advocate or developer evangelist, but doing those while holding a software engineering role. And so that's kind of, those are the things that I did that I think helped, for example, me transition from being an engineer into a DA. So, you know, I think if you're looking to make this kind of jump or this kind of 
role change, really some things that you want to think about are, you know, what are you doing beyond engineering? Are you, are you teaching people? Are you creating programs or working in larger organizations? Um, are you creating content? Are you, say, contributing to open source, creating open source projects? There's, there's really a lot of different things that you can do, and it's going to depend on the company that you join. Um, but yeah, talking, thinking about my experience, I was involved in the meetup scene back in Arizona, in Phoenix. Uh, an old coworker of mine and I started a GraphQL meetup. So we were doing that for about a year. I was involved in the Phoenix React.js meetup, and I spoke a few times doing lightning talks and things like that. I tried to get involved with the coding community on Twitter and, and things like that. Um, <clears throat> so there's lots of different things that I was doing to kind of be involved in the community beyond what my day-to-day -day engineering job uh, required of me. So that's a, a few examples. Other than that, doing a lot of writing. So I was writing on Medium previously. I've written guest posts for different companies and different sites, just kind of sharing the things that I was excited about and sharing them in a written form so that others could learn and, and get excited with me. So there's, you know, again, there's lots of different things you can do. Uh, it doesn't, it's not necessarily going to be one thing. Like, you know, if you just speak at meetups or just speak at conferences or just write blog posts, it's, you know, it's, it's kind of having that healthy mix of trying different things, figuring out where your strengths are and then playing to those strengths. And so, yeah, again, you know, beyond just being an engineer and, and writing code and shipping features or fixing bugs, things like that, it's, you know, the, the DA job really requires a lot of different multitasking, managing projects, running projects, working across different teams, different organizations, working with different stakeholders and figuring out how you can deliver things and and reach goals and reach milestones so you know again it's <clears throat> it's going to vary depending on the company that you're looking at but a lot of people i would say most people probably start out as software engineers or developers before they go into the developer advocacy route and the reason for that is you know you have to be a, a developer first before you can advocate on behalf of other developers so just keep that in mind when you're looking at roles like this. Um, yeah, that's that's basically it. Thanks all for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed that, hearing about my story and Dimitri's story of how we, we came into developer advocacy from engineering, and hopefully that helps you in finding your own career path. Catch you next time.